Hey guys, uh, welcome back. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. My name is Kayleen, I'm your host, and today I am bringing you a long-awaited episode. It's been about, I think, a month or so since I last podcast, but I had a few things to update for you. Um, I had intended to film this last week, but with everything going on between the holiday and the Tits Out Collective and all these things that were going on, I did not have a moment to film. So if you're new, welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy. Um, this is a little podcast about mostly yarn dyeing, crocheting, knitting, spinning, whatever I'm getting up to in the crafty world. Um, and if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. I hope that you enjoy this update. So to get into everything, it's been quite a whirlwind. I'm going to give a little bit of a personal update, pardon, a little bit of a personal update in this first part of the podcast. So if you're not interested in hearing what's been going on in our personal uh, endeavors, you're welcome to skip ahead. I'll pop a timestamp on the screen for you so that you don't have to sit through all of this um, <clears throat> in our little household and everything that's been going on. Um, since the last podcast, a few things have happened. One, uh, my son has started his daycare program and that is where he is today and I am a little nervous and sad and happy and all of these crazy emotions at once. Um, if you do follow me on other social media platforms, you know that I've seen my updates and oh, I'm crying and all of these things. I promise I won't be crying today, <laughs> um, but it is a little bit bittersweet. Um, he's enjoying his program. Um, he's very sweet and such a kind kid and he's been really, really enjoying um, his time there. So I'm happy with that. Even if transition is hard, even, you know, if it pains me to have a little empty nest syndrome going on right now. But anyway, so that's been going on. Things have been pretty stable on that front. Um, in terms of knitting and crochet and doing crafty things, I have not done a ton of actual physical stitching as of late uh, with the start of the summer the start of summer camp and summer schedule it's been quite hectic and along with that transition with my son's daycare um, it's also been crazy all right so where was I? I had a little interruption we have the Verizon guys here at our place today so anyway so in terms of like stitching things I haven't done too much of that I did create some little yarn bowls that I'll show you um in the, you know, whatever part of the podcast. I don't even know. Okay, so um, that's about all I've done for stitching is working on those little yarn bowls. It was kind of like a therapeutic release in terms of dealing with you know, my son being not in the house right now and trying to deal with that transition. So I was like, oh, I can do it stitch, which is fine. Um, and so I'll show you the things that I've been working on, which includes some dyeing and then a secret special project that I have been ramping up to do for the last few months and that I've actually done and I'm really excited to share with you. But so let's just get into it and I will show you the yarn bowls that I made. All right, so for those of you guys who haven't seen or have not seen on my desk, I do have a little yarn bowl that I've made um, out of t-shirt yarn. Sorry for the blown outedness of this color, but it's, you know, really cute. And I got tons of questions about where I got it or how did I make it or would I sell them. So I do have tons of t-shirt yarn in stock, well, in stock in my stash here. And so um, as part of a therapeutic release, I decided to create some yarn bowls for you guys. So I did update the website, which I will also get into in a moment here, uh, with a bunch of different colors. And they're all roughly the same size. They're not, it's not an exact science because all of the material is slightly different. Like this is a little stiffer. This is a little more stretchy, but you get the gist. There are about two two bowls a piece that are available right now per color, including two of this color, which I use my bowl as um, storage for my labeling. A uh, little washi tape, my label thank you stickers, and my business cards. So, so yeah, those are up in the shop right now and I'll make sure to leave a link for you in the iCard up here to direct to the website. And then in terms of shop update general, 
Uh, I did do a die up last week along with the hashtag Tits Out Collective colorway, which right now is gone. Um, I do want to say thank you very much to everybody who has purchased it. Um, I was thinking about doing another small run on my everyday sock for those who are looking to grab it before August 1st. If I can, I will. If I can't, I won't. I'm not going to stress out or push myself to do it right now considering there's so many things going on uh, but I did do a dye up I shared it on Instagram TV and I wanted to show you here the colorways that I've dyed so I tried to kind of go back in my dye notebook and dye up some colorways that I either only dyed once or didn't dye on fingering weight or you know colors that I don't dye frequently it's just to give you guys something different so this one is a Halloween colorway and it's called Abandoned Carnival. Oh, I'll talk about these labels too. I'm all over the place. I'm sorry. This one is Abandoned Carnival and generally this is one that I dye up around Halloween time. It has that kind of neon vibe to it. Uh, this is on sock. Everything I'm showing you is on everyday sock. I also have Akami, which the last time I dyed this up was on the Worsted Update Ever, which was around Christmas time last year. And I didn't dye it up on fingering at all. So this is the first run of it on fingering weight. And I'm very pleased. But it is a nice um, pur purple, like kind of like a straight purple with a warm yellow and a nice cool looking aqua color. So that's Acme. And this one is Alohomora. This was another one that I dyed up on the Worsted Update ever. And this one comes up so beautifully on sock weight yarn. The speckles look really beautiful. Um, this is a cool toned like fluorescent hot pink, warm yellow, kind of like an indigo blue, and then pretty much a straight up purple, pretty neutral toned purple, maybe leaning slight, slightly blue purple. But there's a little more. This one is called Queen of Hearts. And this one I dyed up once before on fingering weight and I hadn't dyed it again, so I wanted to dye it. And this is a black, um, a really cool purple. It kind of breaks blue when you speckle with it. And a nice um, cool toned pink, which is a little bit more vibrant. And you can see it here. And it kind of blends together is how, the style in which I dyed it. All right, and then the last three that I have from this update I thought would make a lovely fade. So this is Molly Weasley, a tried and true classic of Little Bean Loves Yarn. This center one is uh, Ginny Weasley, and this was a new colorway that I dyed up this week, or last week, for the update. And it is a pale pastel pink and purple. It's a very delicate base with orange and yellow speckling. So it's pretty much like her, like representing her ginger, ginger hair, but a nice strong orange speckle. Here we go. And then the last one, and I haven't dyed up in a year at least, um, and this is Dirigible Plums. So this one is a mid-tone peachy orange base with purple speckles. It's pretty simple in terms of structure. Uh, but it's a nice plummy, plummy, ruddy purple. Um, here's a nice shot of the speckles. So, yeah. So this one hasn't been dyed up for quite some time, but it is available now. And so I thought this trio would be really cool to do a fade. So to have like this. No. Like this. Yes. So Molly, Ginny, and Dirigible Plums. So all of these colors are available in the shop. So let's talk about the projects that I've been working on. So one of the projects I've been working on has been my logo redesign. So as you can see here, the logo is still the Yarn Love Yo Lo I can't even say it. Yarn Love logo, which is the prime logo for my brand. But I did want to redesign the structure of how the logo looks. So if you want to compare between the old logo and the new logo, the goals I had for this was to be a little bit clearer in terms of 
the name of my brand, which is Little Bean Loves Yarn. So I wanted it to be very clear. And I also wanted it to be clear like that there was a sheep. Uh, it was related to yarn itself. And then also I wanted to make sure that my website was updated here. And I also wanted to be able to see it front facing on a label so that it would catch your eye. So a little more graphic, a little more distinct. And when you compare it to the older label, you can see that when you front face the skein, it cuts off the words here because of the dimensions that the logo is. And it's very clear, it's not as clear to say, Little Bean loves yarn. Um, it's a little more difficult to read, especially if you're reading it at a distance. It's hard to tell what the brand information is here. But when you look at this one, it's pretty clear, Little Bean loves yarn. So um, that's the first thing that I did. And so I ordered those. And that was coming on the catalyst of moving off of Etsy. So if you have been in the fiber arts um, community for a while, you know many of us do sell on Etsy, or at least used to sell on Etsy, and then in middle of June, Etsy announced that they were raising their fees from 3.5% to 5% uh, per sale. So, and that includes shipping. So what that means is on top of credit card fees, listing fees, and also any fees that you allow to promote your posts on Etsy, which is almost a given. You almost have to do that um, to be able to drive traffic to your Etsy store because of the sheer saturation of the Etsy marketplace. Um, it is a significant increase. And so in the business, um, Indie Dyer business group that I'm a part of, uh, one of the members did do an infographic. She did do some math. For uh, an average $25 per skein, if you sold, you know, 20 skeins or 40 skeins in a month, what your fee increases would be. And to me, I don't think that it's worth it when you also add on all of the other fees. So fees to promote your listings, uh, fees for Google advertising, if you do choose to pay for that, um, fees for coupons. So if you want to send your customers abandoned checkout coupons or returning customer coupons, I forget that there was a couple coupons that Etsy just released, would also be um, added into those fees. And for me, for the same amount of sales, it would have been an over $170 per month increase if I did sell, say, 20 to 40 skates. Um, and that is also including, well actually not including, if you do include the new Etsy tiers, where they have the basic free plan, which is what everybody's on right now, and then starting, um, well, this this year, starting mid-July, if you sign up for Etsy Plus or the next tier up, it's $10 a month, but it will turn to $20 per month after the new year, and then Etsy Premium, for lack of a better word, um, pricing won't be announced until, I believe, next year. So not only are you paying a premium fee, for listing your handmade goods and selling your handmade goods and then you also have to pay fees for promotion and also now in order to get the better quality Etsy you would have to pay at least $20 per month to have access to the better statistics or better promotions or they'll push your listings to the front on top of all of those things, it, it's so much more expensive to maintain an Etsy storefront than it would be to maintain, say, a Shopify storefront, which is what I've moved to. And a lot of things went into this decision, um, a lot of diving into my store analytics, where my customers are coming from, how many of you guys come to me from this platform or Facebook or coming from Instagram, when comparing it to who finds me in an Etsy search, so organic Etsy traffic, it's not even comparable. So the great majority of the people who find me are people who find me from here, who interact with me on social media, who have come on this crazy journey with me, whether it's through Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. And so why would I continue to pay a premium price for the majority of people to already find me through my own work that doesn't cost me anything extra? Um, or me paying per post to have something promoted in a marketplace that there are tens of thousands of listings of hand dyed yarn. So for me, staying in a marketplace that's already very saturated and then also paying a premium price for only a very small percentage of customers to actually come to me from 
direct from that platform. Um, I don't even think I can access or find out the conversion rate of people who come and search for me on Etsy to actually make a purchase from that search. So anyway, so long story short, I do have my own website. It is still my website, littlebeanlovesyarn.com. It has not changed, but now you're able to actually purchase yarn through my website. It is a Shopify site. I do accept PayPal still. Um, you can pay with your credit card through Shopify payments if you choose to do so, um, but you are very wel welcome to use PayPal, um, and it goes, you know, direct through PayPal, so there's protection for you and protection for me and all of that stuff, and that was very important to me. Um, you can also shop through my Facebook or my Instagram, I'm now able to direct link you to products if you're interested in certain things that you see. You no longer have to go and search for them or me to say, oh, go look at my Etsy shop. I can actually direct link you to the yarn that you see or the product that you see that you like. So it makes the experience a little more seamless for you guys, a little easier for me to navigate, and it makes, I think, overall the customer experience a little bit better um, only because you're not stuck searching for something. If I make a post about uh, a yarn that's been dyed, say I put up the Queen of Hearts color, and I say, oh, no, I dyed up this Queen of Hearts. Instead of, instead of having to go to the site, click in the search bar, type in Queen of Hearts, hope that what you're looking for comes up, you can just click the link that's in the actual picture on Instagram or right on Facebook. Um, so, so those are the things that were most important to me. I wanted to be able to continue to let you guys have an easy shopping experience. I wanted to still be able to offer PayPal as a payment and I also wanted to be able to provide you guys with a more seamless experience where you're not having to go search for things. You can actually just click on whatever the product is and if you want it then you can go and get it and if you don't you don't have to but it's there for you to make it a, a little bit easier so if you like it please let me know um, I'm interested to hear your feedback about the new website um, down below there were some small changes that were made but generally the information that is there is the same um, there is now a frequently asked questions page so you're able to read up on all of the things that most people ask me um, in messages I get tons of emails and so um, that those answers are there for you on the website which I was not able to do through Etsy I'm able to make this site look the way I want it to look feel how I want it to feel I'm able to let you guys make wish lists and you know rate things as you see fit so um I, i'm welcome i'm <laughs> i welcome all criticisms comments uh anything you want to throw at me that's totally fine i'm not a web developer but i do have knowledge of coding and the ability to build my site so if something's not working right i know the mobile right now if you go on it my little title is too long for like the mobile format i'm aware but anyway so you can go check it out littlebeanlovesyarn.com if you like it great let me know if you don't great let me know i'm interested in all your comments good or bad so that's that and I plan to make a video I might actually just film it today about the Etsy change and what does it mean for small makers and how you can choose how do you make the choice to either stay or leave from the Etsy platform so um, if you're interested in that let me know again <laughs> I'm just trying to do my best here all right, and then the last thing that I wanted to talk about in terms of things that I'm making and secret projects and all of those things. Um, I do have bags that will be coming. I have one bag left from the totes. Where is it? One lonely bag. Um, apologies for crinkling, but she's all packaged up and ready to go. This is the last bag that I have on hand. Uh, from the totes, I've been getting tons of great feedback, folks sharing photos with me on Facebook and Instagram, tagging me and them, them using their bags, loving them. Thank you so much for your feedback and thank you for sharing that with me. Um, and I also wanted to thank everybody who's reached out to me for my last video. Um, you know, it was really hard for me to open up in that way and talking to you guys I mean I'm sitting here talking to a camera but I feel like I'm talking to you guys uh, about depression and about all of these things and why I created the bags when I did and how I did and so um, if it's bringing you joy that is wonderful and I'm so happy to hear and I'm glad it's holding your many projects I had someone tag me in a post saying like they had three or four project bags in there with all the yarn that they were traveling with and it's so wonderful so thank you so much to everybody who's 
giving me feedback on them and enjoying them that's why I put them in the shop so I am gonna have more bags coming in another time for right now there's only one bag left so if you'd like it there it is it is yours it is ready to go all you have to do is go click 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 to the website um, and purchase it if you want it uh, anyway okay so the last project that I've been working on has been a little bit of a doozy um, it means going out of my comfort zone a little bit so as most of you know I if you know me personally you know that I am a little more adventurous when it comes to crafting and um, creating things I don't really have a fear of failure I'm more of a I'm a perfectionist but I don't really have a fear of failing at something if I want to do something I'm going to do it and I'm going to figure out the best way to do it and that's kind of the mindset that I go in so earlier this year probably January February I made a, a list of things that I wanted to do with my shop this year now this is before I knew that at the whole Etsy thing was going to happen or you know all of these like mental health things were going to be happening for me and you know I made a list of the things in you know, short-term goals and long-term goals. And one of the things that I really wanted to try my hand at was making my own wool wash. Now, I'm a person, I go into something and I am researching to the high heavens and I am going through formulas and I'm doing all these things. And now I wanted to make something that not only that I could use in my own business because I wash a lot of wool, but also something that I could provide to you guys at a reasonable cost um, that was relatively simple for me to make and that you guys would enjoy as well. And so this little wool wash bar has been born. So this week I have created some handmade wool wash bars. These are 20% made with lanolin. Um, the ingredients are very simple. Um, it's saponified oils of olive, coconut, castor seed, and, and lanolin and castor seed oil. From That would be the ingredient list. So olive, coconut, lanolin, and castor seed oil. And I wanted to create a bar that was... Uh, simple for me to make that would be a good quality soap that would be gentle uh, wouldn't be too stripping and also something that wasn't too large um, these are about two and a half to three ounces per bar and it's relatively firm so this is the first batch that I have done and run through they are 100% made by me they're made through the uh, countertop hot process method, which is <laughs> a more advanced technique, but hey, I'm an overachiever. For my first batch of soap, I decided I wanted to go through with like the most difficult technique <laughs> that there is, but I'm used to working with high temperatures and I'm used to doing my stuff with my yarn, so I figured I, I could do whatever I needed to do. I'm not really that scared. Very scared to work with lye, let me just tell you, it was, it's been a little bit of a like getting over your own fears and getting out of your own way. Um, so yes, so I made wool wash bars. These are now going to be curing and losing their water weight over the next four weeks or so. Um, they should be ready to go in the shop at the beginning of August, so probably in the first couple of weeks of August. I thought about putting these up as pre-orders and that they would ship out at that time. If it's something that you are interested in, please let me know. Um, I could do it that way or I could just wait until they are all cured and then put them up as ready to ship. To me it makes no difference. I'm happy to do either thing. But, um, but yeah, they're unscented. Now I'm a person, I prefer unscented products. I don't prefer to like douse myself in perfume. I use unscented wool wash right now. I use liquid wool wash, Eucalan, um, and it's unscented. But that's because that's what I prefer. So. Those are made as unscented wool wash bars. If there's something that you're interested in, please let me know in the comment section down below. Um, you're always welcome to send me an email. Um, I do have my email attached to this channel somewhere, but you can also contact me through my website if it's something that you're interested in. I haven't decided what I'm going to name them yet or how I'm going to package them yet, 
but I wanted to show them to you because it is something that I've been doing this week. So here it is, the fruits of my labor. So I hope you guys enjoy it when it's ready to go. I'm going to be testing it. I have a couple of small bars that are sample size bars that I'm going to be using and testing. So and I don't know. I don't know what the phone guy is doing. I was like ready to shut this camera off. Okay. So that's what I've been working on. I did make a second batch of soap, but I made soap for myself. <laughs> so I made myself a Bastille soap, which is olive oil, coconut oil, and castor oil. Um, and it's very high olive oil content. And I made it for me and mostly for my son because my son has really sensitive skin and eczema and all of those things and food allergies. And so I wanted to make a soap that I knew that was safe for him. So anyway, those are the things that I've been working on. Um, let me check here. Okay interruptions it wouldn't be a little lean podcast without interruptions okay so I did solicit for some questions on Instagram stories I've only gotten two well one real question and then one compliment so Raven Diva 77 says would you consider making minis of your colorways and not just solid tonals of course <laughs> um I just have to get my sh it together I really have to get everything together and kind of Focus the things that I want to do for the coming months and especially for the holiday season. I've been asked if I would do an advent calendar. All the dyers have already put up all their advent calendars for order now. I, I'm behind. I'm behind the times. So we'll see what comes in the coming months. But certainly um, any feedback that you guys have for me, I always welcome. So please feel free to leave comments below or to contact me um, via email. You can DM me on Instagram. Um, I'm usually pretty good about answering those things. And then Sloane, who is my brother's girlfriend, says, no questions. I wanted to say that you are awesome. Well, thank you. You are pretty awesome as well. Um, yes. So really, that's about it. <laughs> Welcome to my crazy and chaotic life. <laughs> anyway. So uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the start of your summer. I know we are all coming into mid-July right now, and boy was it hot the last few weeks. We finally got a nice break this week in terms of the heat and humidity, so uh, we will definitely be enjoying the outdoors this coming week. Um, but anyway, I really do hope that you are enjoying the start of your summer, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your week, and I hope that you will come join me on my new website. Um, you can sign up for an email list. I do have an email list. I haven't sent an email list, an email out yet to the email list because I am um, still familiarizing myself with all of the tools and tricks that are available to me right now. Um, but I will be sending out updates via email. So if you'd like to, please do go sign up for my email list and I will let you know when things are coming out or when I have kids coming out for certain things. Um, and also if you don't, please do follow me on Instagram. It is where I post the most often and where I usually solicit for questions or comments or feedback from you guys. Um, it's the easiest platform. I can put polls up there. You can click yes or no or one choice or another or actually leave a comment or a question, things like that. So, uh, highly encourage that. Uh, if you liked this podcast, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, please give it a thumbs down. That's cool too. And if you're not subscribed and you'd like to be, please do hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit the little bell icon because YouTube doesn't like to send out subscribers their subscriptions. They don't like to send subscriptions to subscribers unless you click the bell. So you might as well always just click the bell because otherwise you'll never see anything on YouTube anymore. But um, in any case, I hope that you guys have a wonderful week and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye!